Welcome to AGK Tech Tips. In this video, I will show you how to create a set of identifiers that are instantly identifiable upon reading. It is vital that you place the correct type of data into your identifier. If you don't, you'll generate all sorts of bugs and errors in your program. A simple and easy trick is to simply press I in front of any integer, F in front of any float, and S in front of any string. By doing this, we know what type of data goes into what type of identifier at a glance. For example, if I type in i integer as integer, uh, f float as float, and s string as string, then it's obviously they're named integer float and string so it's pretty obvious what they are already but simply by pressing this i in front of any other name you simply know that it's instantly an identifier you know what it is at the beginning of the program but when you're halfway through the program you're doing calculations and you need to know whether or not um, you set up uh, the position of an object as an integer or position object as a float then you need to know this sort of thing um, a better example might be i object as integer i f object as integer and s object as integer and this also means of course you can reuse identifiers rather than just having one object through the program i can now have three different types of objects and i'll know the situations where i need to um, call s object instead of f object and i object um, and simply by pushing the i, f, and s, you'll make your life... Oh, <laughs> I've typed that in wrong. That should be float. Just goes to show what happens when you talk and program at the same time. So there you go. That makes more sense. <laughs> so i object is now integer, f object is now float, and s object is now string. And this basically allows us to instantly look at the identifier and understand what we're looking at. So at any time in the program, I can just call i object and I will know that's an integer. Any time in the program, I can call f object and I will know that is a float. In any point of the program, I can call s object and I will know that is a string. And this has saved me many headaches in the past. So this is my tech tip for today.